In this video, I want to dive into the Oculus Quest 2 specs, build quality, some of the accessories, gameplay, and why I think you should definitely buy the Oculus Quest 2. Let's get into it. Hi guys, it's Sal, the voice behind the We Deem channel. We review, we test, we game, a community for gamers. And if you're interested in seeing me spend my money so you don't waste yours, hit the subscribe button. The Oculus Quest 2 is a standalone VR headset. It's the second edition in the Oculus Quest line and could be considered the standard for VR gaming headsets. One of its biggest selling points is you don't need an expensive gaming PC or base station just put the headset on and you're ready to start gaming. Now the Oculus Quest 2 is priced really low at $299 for the tech and quality you get here in a standard wireless headset, but it is most definitely not the best on the market. I am definitely no expert in the VR space, only using the PlayStation VR and some cheaper devices, but being someone who has motion sickness, I am here to tell you that I experienced very little to no motion sickness with the Oculus Quest, which is something I can't say for PSVR. This is no doubtably due to the resolution being 1832 by 1920 per eye, which compared to the original Quest, which ran at 1440 by 1600 per eye, and the PSVR coming in at 1080 by 960 the oculus quest 2 uses a single fast switch lcd which eliminates what is known as the screen door effect the image is sharp and reading text or seeing things in the distance is clear but this does pose an issue with inter popillary distance or more commonly referred to as IPD. Most VR headsets use two LCDs and a slider to provide more control over IPD, but the Oculus Quest 2 only has three physical settings. Now this might be an issue for other users because take it from me, if it wasn't set right or the straps weren't snug, I experienced some motion sickness and obviously that creates a bad gaming experience. Now for me as long as the lenses were at the far third setting, it was perfect but our bodies are built different and these settings might not fit the space between other people's eyes. Now the Oculus field of view is pretty limited with it squaring off on the third setting only, which is not something you experience with PC VR headsets, as I have heard from other YouTubers and reviewers. But for me, who doesn't have much experience with VR headsets, this didn't really affect me. The Quest 2 supports six degree of freedom head and hand tracking, unlike the Oculus Go, which uses three DOF. Three DOF movement can be tracked in three three axes on the X, the Y, and the Z. Six DOF movement is tracked on the same three axes, but with this technology, it can not only track the turn or tilt of the head, but it can also track sidestepping, backstepping, and moving up as well as down. The Oculus Quest 2's fluid gameplay and graphically pleasing experience in the VR world is due to the Snapdragon XR2 processor, which I'm going to go more into detail on reviews by thisguy.com. And the Quest 2 also has 6 gigs of RAM, making it fully capable of playing current and future gen VR games. The Oculus Quest 2 comes in two different models, a 64 gig and a 256 gig. Unfortunately, there's no expandable storage here, so no external SD card, which is kind of a bummer. The Quest 2 features four cameras, which are used to track the movement of the headset. It has a power button on the right side of the unit, USB type C and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the left side. The headset features two speakers that are built into the strap, which I think are okay, but obviously aren't going to give you the immersive experience as some VR headsets do that have standalone large speakers that go over the ears, but you can always use your own headset 
But the one thing that I think is weird, you can't use Bluetooth headsets out of the box. It also features two mic holes on the bottom and the audio quality from the mic is pretty decent. The headset has a two hour battery life, which during gameplay was a tad annoying, but I was hooked on Beat Saber, but it's not a big deal. The included controllers have an extremely long battery life and after having it for a month they are still going. Now I feel the controllers are comfortable to hold but I have heard mixed reviews and the tracking of the controllers is pretty good unless they are behind your back or over your head out of the camera's view. Apparently the HTC Vibe and the Valve Index does a better job of tracking in this regard but personally I have barely found myself reaching outside of the camera's view on the Oculus. Quest 2. One other cool feature is the fact that you can Chromecast the device to a smart TV or smart device. Now it depends on your internet connection. It can get a little laggy, but it's definitely cool if you're at a party with the visor so other people playing around you can actually see what you're doing. The last feature I want to touch on is the Guardian, which is the safe bearer you set to prevent yourself from walking into anything. And if you happen to walk out of that barrier, you can see your surroundings in somewhat of a static view. You can turn on this feature that allows you to tap the side of the headset to go into pass-through mode at any time to see your surroundings. Actually, to tell you the truth, it's a really cool feature, something that I did not see on the PlayStation VR. The Oculus Quest 2 has a sleek design and from what I can see is much smaller than the original Oculus Quest. The headset is 191.5 millimeters by 102 millimeters by 142 millimeters and weighs about 503 grams. It's light enough not to be overbearing while wearing it, but you can feel the weight in hand, but overall it is a pretty light device. The housing is constructed of a pretty sturdy plastic and the strap feels pretty strong, but when it comes to a good fit, this is where the strap fails. If you're hosting a party or hanging out with friends then the strap is pretty annoying to adjust to different players heads and if it isn't adjusted right this is where motion sickness can be experienced so I suggest picking up the elite strap performance wise games run at 72 Hertz and in my experience games run fluid and graphically look amazing thanks to the upgraded resolution of the oculus quest 2 the Quest 2 is the first time I've experienced Beat Saber. It was an overall great experience and the game runs at a minimum of 72 frames per second. Now the Oculus Quest 2 can also act as a desktop VR headset via the link cable for games that require a little more horsepower than the Oculus 2 can offer. And they run at the current 72 hertz as well. But apparently next year there will be an option to toggle the 90 hertz. Personally, I can't contest to this feature because I don't have the cable and even if I did, I'm sure my budget gaming Motel laptop that you guys may have seen on this channel before won't be able to handle those VR games anyway. According to the Thrill Seeker YouTube channel, the Oculus Quest 2 PC connection was the quickest and easiest Oculus Link experience he has ever had. Oculus Link on the original Oculus Quest has always been a little finicky, slow, and a little glitchy, but here it felt a little fast and easy. He said latency for him was pretty imperceivable. The compression from the image is still there from the original Oculus Link, but the resolution and visual experience does hide it. Now this is something I really didn't notice because I unfortunately don't have trained eyes. That is probably a good thing in this instance. I feel like I have to mention this feature. The Oculus Quest 2 has something called Virtual Desktop. And if you have a Wi-Fi 6 router, which I don't, you can experience PC VR games wirelessly. And apparently it does have a little more latency than the link cable. But it's so minuscule that the experience is pretty close. Got a question from Bose underscore Game Room on Instagram. What's the video game library like? Is there a subscription service to play a bunch of VR games for a monthly cost or do you have to buy them all individually? Well there is no monthly subscription like Xbox Game Pass. All the games are pretty much 
priced individually ranging from free up until i think the max that i seen so far was 39.99 and that was the walking dead saints and sinners i think that there is a pretty decent library i think last time i heard it was over 250 games not as big as something like the playstation vr but you got games like job simulator super hot vr which is something i'm definitely interested in checking out all the vader immortal games and like i said the walking dead saints and sinners beat saber if you guys are interested in seeing me check out any of those games or any games you're interested in seeing hit that like button and let me know in the comments down below which game you'd like to see me play. The Oculus Quest 2 is the best standalone wireless VR headset in my opinion. And if you're like me who had a PlayStation VR but put it away because of motion sickness never to play it again, this is your chance to get back into VR gaming if that is something you would love to do. If you don't want to be tethered to a gaming PC or just don't have one laying around but still want the option to in the future, the Oculus makes for a good standalone VR headset headset as well as a pretty good gaming PC headset. The specs of the Quest 2 will be fully capable of VR gaming into the future. It has a pretty decent library with games being added all the time and not to mention the PC library if you have a capable gaming PC. If you have any questions or want to express your experiences with the Oculus Quest 2, please let the We Deem community know below in the comments. And if you found the information provided in this video to be of value, give us a thumbs up and share the video amongst your friends. Thumbs down and constructive criticism is always accepted as well. We come to the end of the video and I hope by now you made a decision whether the Oculus Quest 2 is the VR headset for you. I personally think for the price you're getting a whole lot of tech here and if you don't have a gaming PC this is probably one of the best ways to experience VR gaming. But since we're at the end of the video I have nothing left to say about the Oculus Quest 2. Two, I'd like to say don't forget to let me spend my money so you don't waste yours by hitting that subscribe button. Hey guys, don't forget that the products discussed in any of my videos are always in the description down below if you're interested in checking any of them out or helping me make the videos just a little bit better every time. Also, don't forget to check out one of our other videos. What are you waiting for? One, two, they're there. Click one of them.